Hello, uh, today I'll be talking um, over current relay protection simulation studies using Big Silent Power Factory. This is Dr. Malake. So the first thing what we need to look at is why are the study of protection and fault calculation required? Generally, the study of fault parent is important because it is helpful to design the rotation of circuit breaker for protection grading studies or coordination for power system stability and of course for power quality studies. So the purpose of power system protection overall is to trip the circuit breaker necessarily to disconnect faulted equipment from the health part of the power system or power network. This is because uh, we have to avoid uh, a further damage to equipment, a blackout, or shaking the network, as it is very ex uh, expensive to repair the damage or, or the cost of damage equipment. So uh, this is a recap from my previous video. So the principle of overcurrent protection is provide operation when the fault current exceeds the predetermined setting current. And then, of course, breaking of overcurrent protection is, uh, is designed to provide a backup protection for a primary relay when, you know, the primary protection relay is being failed to detect for, you know, um, remote faults, okay, or local fault dependent. So, um, let's have a look at task, or let's do this exercise. Assume we have a network, okay, simple network, which is radial, for, uh, for simplicity, uh, transformer is ignored. A three phase 11 kV, uh, where if a bus is fed at bus A, so this cable is, sorry, the, the cable is fed at bus A, okay, which is protected using a standard inverse. That is one of the Standard uh, from the inverse IDMT pair of the, the you know the relay. So for example, very inverse, standard inverse, extreme inverse. Okay, so standard inverse. Okay. So the relay are fitted with a CT ratio of one hundred to one uh, one amp. So the primary is the CT ratio of primary is hundred and secondary relay and for the nominal current one on. So we need to determine the short circuit fault current at each bus. Well, we need to know how faults are calculated. Okay, faults are calculated based on the uh, impedance of the network. So for example, now we have this formula for fault in kiloamp or amp, and then this is a fault level in MPA. Okay? So for example, like to consider the fault at bus A, which is this one, because this the generator are the source of the fault current. We we'll have to follow this one, so we only need to consider the Z source. Three ohm. That means three point one seven. And then for fault on here on bus B, we we'll need to consider three ohm plus one ohm. That is the that the fault current is from that is from three to three kilam. And then of course, uh, for fault at C and D, of course, we need to add up each, and this will be like the uh, further from 3 kilo amp to 1.5 kilo amp, and then from 1.5 to 1.2 kilo amp. Of course, as you can see, the fault parents are reduced when the fault is far from the generator source. Okay, so what about the, the nominal current or the load current before fault happened? During the state state, well, that is uh, calculated, uh, you know, um, as P divided by root of time voltage, where the power is three megawatts, and then for the state state current or the nominal current before the form happened was one hundred five amp, just roughly one hundred amp. Okay. That means, but when the fault happened at pass A, it is around 30 times bigger than this one. At pass D, around 10 times, 31,000 amp, or 0.1 kilo 
that one kilogram, so almost 10 times bigger. Of course, this is just for academy, for, you know, learning purpose, but realistically, it should be like a few times of the nominal, maybe two times or five, up to five or seven times, not like the third times. Okay. So, um, well, let's compare then this, uh, how this is evaluated. Okay, so for example, now, um, okay, let me just check it this. So for example, now, um, we can look at this is the comparison now, okay? So this is now uh, a fault at each pass, okay? In MVA and in kiloamp, okay? And in, uh, you know, peak current, okay? So IK double dash means, um, you know, IMS, uh, or IK is, is means uh, is RMS for current, and then IP is uh, P current, and then for S, K, S, S is MVA. So MVA is like Rosary times the volt current times the voltage, okay? So for example, we can see that the volt current is 3 kiloamp, 2 kiloamp, 1.5 kiloamp, and 1.2 kiloamp. As what we calculated, okay, we calculated, and then of course in terms of in MV, 16 MV, 14 MV, 13 MV, 24 MV, for uh, I think is like a lot of times uh, for current and stuff, so almost um, seven five three three. Okay, in terms of impedances, as you can see, it is two three four five. So the uh, when the fault is remotely or far from the source or the impedance source is getting high uh, so the network impedance is high increased from two to five and then of course if we convert this impedance and as you can see two ohm in here but in here are uh, 4.9 and then close to five oh because if we add two oh ohm source impedance plus one that is three plus one four plus one five oh ohm okay that's what it means okay so then from that we and the next step is to do the course to the uh, setting calculations, which is task two. So we need to uh, calculate the operating times of the relay for close for, for close up faults, just when fault is in front of the relay. We need to consider this uh, setting current is two times the loading current, and then of course at a different TMS for each relay. Okay. So if we look at here, the TMS is 0 0.5 for relay A, which is this one, and then relay B 0 0.2, sorry, sorry, then relay C 0 0.1. Okay, and then of course, this is just configured in Dix Island. This is relay A, B, C, and CTA, B, C, or current transformer. Okay. So if we have to access fault in front of relay C, of course, um, the relay, uh, the fault current is, or magnitude is 1.58 kiloamp, just like one uh, percentage or application in one percent, just in front of the relay C. Well, as we can see, all relays are treated. Let's have a look exactly the time. So, Relay uh, C, which is this one, trip search at 0 0.3 second, which is the fastest relay, because the fault is just in front of it, 1% of length. And then the next one is relay B, provides a backup at one second. Okay, and then relay C, relay A, Provide a backup, further backup at 1.68 seconds. So almost the gradient is uh, um, close to 0 0.7 seconds. Minute. Okay. What about when the fault is at B? When the fault is at B, again, relay B is the primary for protect relay so that it trips, and, and relay A provide a backup. 
Okay, let's have a look in at uh, in larger one. So relay D treated as 0 0.87, and then uh, relay A provided packet. But as you can see, relay C did not treat because the fault is, you know, uh, on the upstream side of this relay, so that there is no fault current on here. Okay, so the fault is up to here. So relay C, B treat first, and then relay A provide backup. Okay. Uh, still trading around 0 0.7 second. Usually trading times around you know, 300 milliseconds or 0 0.2 second, but this is just intentionally, you know, around 700 milliseconds. Okay, so what about for fault in front of relay A? Well, in this case, fault is just near the generator. Only relay near the fault chip, which is relay A. At 1.23 second relay C and D are not three. So that is the only the only disadvantage of overcurrent relay grading is for the highest fault magnitude there is no it trip it, and the trip time is longer, it takes long, 1.2 second, and there is no backup for this one. Okay, so we can uh have a look at the summary. So this is just like when we have fault at bus C, for example, when there is a fault at bus C here. So you like A click first, yeah, at zero point three second, then relay B provide the backup, and then relay A tricked at a delayed time, 1.6 second, okay, which is this one. And then if the fault is at bus B, which is this one, then bus B and A are tricked, which is bus B 0.8 and bus A 1.4. And then when the fault is at bus A, only bus A tricks 1.69 second. We can do on the excitement, like uh, we call it um, tracing, okay? Like tracing, well, how does it work? Well, we, what we do is we just apply a fault anywhere, and then we can just trace it, execute it, okay? That if when fault is applied in here, like, so for example, 50% of between line uh, CD, okay? Then the relay, each relay provide three. In here, as you can see, okay. But re relay uh, C drip first at 0 0.33 second, then relay B, then relay C, or relay A, sorry. And then for fault between bus B and C again, uh, for one two relays are trip because relay B and C, A are only if relay C cannot trip. And then again, when the fault is at 50% of um, relay A, of course, only relay A is trip. So, sorry. This is just the, to, to see the role of main and backup relay. So you want to have the fault as we on this task. So this is just, we call it a crazy. Okay. Well, um, Conclude this one. First, we need to calculate the fault current, and then we need to summarize up, and then uh, this will help how much fault current is on each pass part. From that, we can apply the setting current, and then we can calculate the tricking time. And then from this, uh, um, we can learn that the uh, calculating the fault current will help to determine the setting of the relay. And then, of course, after that, uh, to evaluate the tripping time of the relay. Or we can get a delay or, you know, fast, if, uh, fast or increase the overhead time of the relay by adjusting the TMS value, you know, for setting current depend on application. Okay. So, well, how, how this is done in Dick Silent, we can look at, um, Quickly on how this are uh, in the uh, platform. 
For example, if we look at on here, there is a deep sign on here, each relay at A, B, and C. Okay, we have relay here. For example, if I right click on here, and then if I click edit device, uh, device okay, I have relay A and CTA, okay. So from that, I can apply fault at pass A in here, for example, at pass C, just the fault of pass C, okay. Then I can say, for example, I can click this one fault at 1%, okay, it's not there. So the fault current is 1.5, and then of course, I can right click on here and, and then show the overcurrent, so for example. Okay, if you look at on here, all three relays are triple. Okay. And then of course, uh, I can also do uh, the same thing for at each bus. And, or I can also do the tracing of the, the relay calculate. Say for example, like, So this is just the tracing, I can just close it and execute, okay. It is now, as you can see, when I do the tracing, then the fault is between bus B and C are created, and relay A and B are created, so relay B prepares and relay A goes back up, of course, relay C does not treat. So this is just like um, a big silent, uh, our factory modeling. So this is where we create a fault. We have various types of uh, fault methods, of course, and, and uh, depend on the application. And then this is the line language. So say ten percent, fifty percent, one hundred percent doesn't matter. It's just we need to select that perfectly. Okay. So uh, from that, let's have a look. Um, what will be the next step? So the next step is like for you guys to uh, practice. Okay. So assume that the same network uh, apply uh, or perform relay gradient study for uh, using a very inverse IDMP curve and then of course use the CPU of 125 amp secondary. Uh, instead of one amp, uh, it's now given uh, five amp and then instead of standard inverse, as the inverse. Then the is value of 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.2 for each relay or for relay A, B, C, respectively. Okay? You can use this table uh, for, you know, for the inverse. So, next step we focus on uh, the assessment of overcurrent and earth fault detection under varying fault level with increasing concentration of renewable energy sources. For example, this is uh, the assessing on the varying fault level, say from maximum to minimum fault level. And then of course, uh, what will happen if there is anything like a wind turbine is connected here, or you know, a solar is connected to this one on the renewable energy sources. So what will happen when there is a fault here? Of course, when this is Weak source, okay. How will this relay behave? What about when the fault is in here, okay? Stay, so, uh, you know, uh, tuned, guys, and thank you for watching this video. Uh, have a nice time.